hello. Uh, we're going to work on the bus today. Um, there's, a, there's a lot to be done. Uh, it's Saturday afternoon. I have until Sunday evening to get this done because I, you know, have other things in the shop I got to get done. Uh, my main goal is to uh, do the rear trailing arm bushings, torsion arm bushings, and uh, rear wheel bearings because the wheel bearings are so bad that I actually have negative camber. So I would like to get rid of that. Um, I have all the bits, including some new bits for uh, the engine that uh, I'm going to change. Um, and uh, I'm adding another gauge and moving uh, an existing gauge, or at least a sending unit for an existing gauge. Uh, so, let's get started, shall we? So what do I have uh, for rear suspension? I have two new shocks, all the wheel bearings and seals, and also control arm uh, bushings. I think there's some other things in here that I'm not really sure. Oh no, those are the seals. Those are also seals. I think there's two sets of seals and then inner and outer wheel bearings um, and torsion arm bushings. For engine related stuff, I have new uh, relief springs. I have a, uh, uh, this is for temperature as I recall, um, oil relief plug, oil temp sensor. I'm, ch I'm moving the oil temp sensor sending unit to uh, one of the threaded plugs for the relief um, so that I get a more accurate reading. And then up the top where I put that adapter I didn't have to buy, uh, I'm putting a sending unit for the oil pressure sender because I'm adding an oil pressure gauge. Um, I also have dress-up bits from CB Performance, a crank pulley, and also an alternator putty. That'll be fun to put on because I'm pretty sure I won't be able to get the original one off. I also have an 009 uh, Petronix distributor, and I'm going to replace the clickety-clack Mr. Gasket uh, electric pump that I have in there with the Durali that I originally meant to put on but didn't show up before the show last time. So, the first thing uh, will be getting the engine out. All right, transmission's out, engine's out, and we can start dealing with all of this crap. Um, uh, should probably get a light. Ow. I've got to get, got to get these arms out. That's what I've got to do. Uh, so there's a bolt that goes through here. I'm going to replace this bushing. Um, not sure how I'm going to handle these lines yet um, because the hard line does actually go through the arm. Um, so, I don't really know what I'm going to do about that, but likely at the end of this we're going to end up leading the brakes. So, easiest thing first is remove the shocks. I'm going to do that while I ponder what I'm going to do about these. 
Um, so let me get those out and then maybe by then I'll have an idea as to what to do with those. All right, shocks are off. Fire was required. Uh, this is the worst side of the wheel bearings. Um, obviously you can see the wheel's not on. There's no axle on it. I, uh, I shouldn't be able to do that or hear things. So I'm going to take this side apart first. Um, and see what's going on. I still haven't decided what I'm going to do with um, with the uh, the brake lines here. Um, the hoses are new. I'd really like to avoid making new hard lines, but you know sometimes it's just unavoidable. So we'll see what I can manage to do. Uh, buses are weird because they've got a 46 millimeter um, nut axle nut back here as opposed to beetles and everything else that's oh well might have something to do with how loose that axle nut is but we'll see um That's not good. All right, so that might require some filing. <laughs> Gack those threads pretty good. <clears throat> Never done bearings back here before, but even in the shaft, you can see there's quite a lot of play in there. Oh, uh, so the only reason I want to take all this apart and do that bushing and everything is because I have to disconnect the arm from this, uh, the plate anyway to do the bushing. So I figured just pull everything out, clean it up, paint it, yada, yada, yada. I think if I undo these three bolts, it should allow me to pull the whole backing plate off. That'll make reassembly of all this crap a lot easier. So I'm gonna try to do that. Um, I gotta get the parking brake cable out of here. Which is useless anyway because parking brake doesn't work. So, um, all right, let me. Uh, oh, how does that come out? Oh, all right, well, I guess as long as it's still attached to it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, this looks like 15s to me. should just allow me to stretch that out of the way. Okay, great. Rachel's here to help. You're gonna use uh, the, uh, the assault ratchet to get these bolts out. Um, so what her and I were just discussing is how this is all gonna come apart. I didn't realize that this hub and the arm are actually two pieces. So there's a bolt here, a bolt here, and uh, a nut and bolt and a nut and bolt. So we're gonna pull those out. Hopefully this hub will kind of come away from the plate and then we can start working on getting that arm out. Um, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna have Rachel start yanking these out so that I don't break my wrists and I watch her struggle for a little while. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see how well this works out. Not at all. All right, don't touch that, it's hot. You can tell from the smoke. Oh, it ruined those threads at all. So we'll be replacing that bolt. Who oh, Yep, just said don't touch it.
All right. Okay, so we've got the hub on the bench here. Rachel and I are gonna try to get this seal out, maybe this spacer as well, because I'm pretty sure there's a snap ring behind this. All right, so Rachel, if you wanna get in here. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Sorry. So. Good. Let it go a little more. Because now the nuts. Oh, well. Now the nuts stuck on. The other side. Oh. Now it's stuck in here. Wipe my dirty hole out, wench. Well. Never asked me that before. Um, and when the promotion ah, thing was up, it did uh, it. like the flyers snap on guy was just like Okay. So this is gonna come out the front like that. What's bearing number two just it's, No, it's not the bearing, it's the spacer in between. Start getting all of that out. Okay. Is there a preferred what you got a butter knife? <laughs> So, uh, you got to get, oh, in the hole, you got to get this guy out, which is loose. So that should be easy, but then we've got to get that guy out, which I think we're going to have to use a hammer and chisel from this side um, to kind of tippy-tap it out of there. Um, I wonder if maybe we can't just stick a socket with uh, an extension in there and bonk it out. Ooh, did I get grease in my hair? Probably. Oh, no. Oh, no. It just felt greasy up there. Where is my fingers? And my, yeah, well, now you keep putting it in your hair. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to get these bits out of here and then start putting in the new bits. New bits. ha! <laughs> Please don't break anymore. Woo. You all right? Yep. Yes. Yep. I'm gonna hold it down here now. Got it. Woo. Home wheel. We need to steel wool the inside of this at all? Yeah, I mean, we probably should, but we're not gonna. Why not? Because I don't care. Got a goo pump? Uh, actually, I do. That's a great idea. Fabulous idea, and the airline's already here. You're gonna do this. No, I'm yeah. content to watch you do it. Great, then can you move the camera so that I can actually see that? Just pick the whole thing up. Just pick, <laughs> just pick the whole thing up. Pick what up? Pick the camera up. <laughs> the tripod. Why? So that you can see down the bore. Oh, you want to see down the bore? Yes. Oh. Care about the tool. <laughs> the boo pump. How were you going to do this if you hadn't used the goo pump? By hand. Jesus. Boy, enjoy the sound. Oh, that's weird. You're weird. 
More goo. How come the other bearing didn't need goo? That's gonna. Oh, we're gonna flip it over and goo it. Yeah, that's, that's mm -hmm. how I do it. <laughs> flip her over and go in for seconds. Goo in for seconds. Wow. Wow. Okay, so you gotta get the uh, the other snap ring in here. Okay. Now we should be able to just drop that in there. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Calling, as a blacksmith. Oh, drama. Oh, no, I definitely didn't miss that calling at all. Is it all the way in? I don't think it is. That's uh, <laughs> got everything back together. It rotates nice and tight, and there's no play in it. Perfect. Yes. That's what I wanted. Um, okay, so now we're going to do the bushing on the control arm. Yep. And then uh, kind of vaguely wide brush paint. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's not budging. Well, after much uh, raging and fire and death, um, I managed to get the old, uh, the old bushing out and ruin the inside of the arm. So now we get to try to put the new bushing in. Um, and I'm going to try to use the vise like a press. So what I'm going to do, my assistant has gotten me this can of, uh, mind frame, yes, this can of white lithium grease. I'm just going to douche the hell out of this here. take this guy and we're gonna stick it in here like that honey can you start winding that in there you go I'm good keep going Sorry. all right so hold on because now the bushing may not have anywhere to go because of this because it's got to come all the way out you know what I mean mm -hmm. yeah see that yep all right can you start winding that in again Until it's tight. Like that. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm going to wipe this off so it's not so gross, and then Rachel's going to wire brush this as well and paint it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we'll go on to the next thing. Okay, so now that uh, the hub is uh, all, uh, everything's replaced and cleaned up and painted and the arm is uh, got a new bushing and it's cleaned up and painted, I have to get this off so that I can replace the bushings in front of and behind the spring plate. Um, I have here a turnbuckle that's attached to the plate and uh, hooked up to the uh, the upper the to uh, the upper shock bolt. I don't really like this angle, but it's given me enough pull on the plate to get the plate away from its perch. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip these bolts out of here to get the cap off, and then we're going to pry under here, under here to get the plate away from its perch, and then slowly let this down, and then. And then that'll take the tension off the things. So we're going to take these off.
Yeah. So, so those are hella gross. That's interesting because these don't really look like the ones that I bought. So fun. Uh, okay. So now I'm going to do, do this. Start to let this down. And that comes out like that. So in its resting position here, I'm going to mark inside of here. I'm also going to mark this to kind of help clock it. So now. the rest of the tension off here and just take that guy off and that comes out uh, these are directional um, so I'm gonna mark I'm going to mark the end of, uh, of this as out because um, they don't, well, if you put them in backwards, they will fit, but they don't like to spin that way. Yeah, these really don't look like the ones that I just bought, unless I'm remembering the ones that I just bought incorrectly. So. Um, so, uh, I'm going to leave, oh, you know what, actually, I can just leave this on because the bushing goes in here anyway. So, uh, I'm going to clean up in here and grease the hell out of it and then, uh, new bushing, put this back in and, um, new bushing, cap on, all done. All right, new bushing installed. My hole is greased. We're gonna, just going to stick this guy right in here and get this lined up as we can with the mark that I made. It should be about there. So now I can take my turnbuckle, hook that back up. I have to get a... Oh no, it's already past it. Okay. I just have to get a mallet and push that in a little bit more. Come on. Ended up just uh, just using the cap to suck it in. Uh, All right, this will be interesting because it almost never winds up correctly enough for me to get the bolts in. I ended up having to use a punch to get everybody where they want to go. Oftentimes I'll just go get new hardware and um, and get lo you know longer bolts. Um, in this case though I'm probably just going to use a big old set of vice grips. check to see if the other bits are dry. If they are, we'll start reassembly. If they're not, then I'm going to start pulling the other side apart. All right, so we ended up doing a second coat on all of these bits, so that's drying. Um, I'll probably wire brush the plate and the end cap real quick and hit that with some black. While everything is drying, I'm going to get started on this side. Um, and hopefully fly through that now that I have a basic idea as to how much of a pain in the ass everything is. Um, and then once, uh, once I get around to reassembly of something, I'll uh, get you back in here. All right, the driver side bits are dry. I have the passenger side pulled apart, everything replaced, 
painted and drying. So now we can start uh, reassembling this side. First thing I'm gonna do is get that, uh, that trailing arm in. I'm gonna go in this bracket with the bump stop face up. See how easily these will actually go in. It looks like not at all. This is a really weird position to try to hold this too. There we go, okay. These are captive nut. So as long as I can get the bolt in, we should be okay. Maybe. And now I'm having lefty, lefty tighty, righty loosey issues. moving pretty good so okay all right so now that I can get this up here I'll probably get a floor jack in to support it and then start trying to get the hub on it feels like it's right all right I've got the hub on uh, I'm gonna have to go to the store and uh, get another one of these guys tomorrow uh, so I'm going to get the backing plate back on and probably the drum. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the brake lines tonight. Um, so I'm going to get that back on, put the other side back together when it's dry, uh, and then I'll be kind of done for today. And, and then tomorrow um, we can get the brakes back together or, you know, the lines in. Um, I want to try to fit the... Uh, fuel pump a little bit better because um, it's you know there's just a lot of it's a lot of stuff I want to clean up underneath before the transmission goes back in and then I can focus on the engine and uh, adding all the updates and whatnot so I'm gonna finish up here and I'll see you in the morning all right it's another day um, I managed to get the uh, trailing arms back in last night and the hubs and everything um, even got the brakes all kind of hooked up uh, I had to buy some new bolts this morning to get uh, the passenger side shock on and replace a bolt that I screwed up pretty good on the driver's side uh, hub uh, so I'm gonna do that first thing this morning and then one of the things I want to do is uh, try to find a better cleaner way to mount the electric fuel pump also replacing the electric fuel pump that I have in there uh, with a Durali unit um, and then once I have all that good uh, and kind of cleaned up and wiring and everything I may run uh, the wire that I need to run for the new gauge that's going in first and then transmission can go in once the trans is in then I'm just going to focus on the engine and updating it a little bit. I'm going to do uh, a valve adjustment as well, oil change, um, I'm adding uh, a couple of sending units for gauges um, and then uh, i got to tighten up the exhaust a little bit um, and then that can go in too. So I'm hoping everything will get done today. Uh, I'm going to get started on replacing the things that I have to replace in the suspension um, and then uh, we can start looking at the fuel pump. Okay, so. This is underneath the bus. I've got the pump kind of poorly over here. Um, I think, because it comes out of the tank over on this side, I'm going to try to get my Durali kind of over here maybe. And then, because that'll give me enough room to run the line over to the inlet. And then um, I can run the fuel line off of this side around this bracket and kind of zip tie to this and then it'll already be where it needs to be to meet the engine and that keeps everything up nice and high and hopefully stops things on the road grabbing it or if the axles fail or whatever so um, I'm going to move that over there and then we can start uh, I guess that's kind of it I guess I can start trying to fit the transmission back in after that and uh, torque up the axles and uh, then maybe we'll bleed the brakes and focus on the engine for the rest of the day. You know, something like that. <laughs> All right, box is at least hung. It's not bolted in or anything, but so I've got to push it back a little bit more to get those bolts in. 
the clutch cable in, reverse light wires, get, uh, you know, top. Oh, this one doesn't have those, but I've got to get, uh, this is, this bar is going to stay here until I get the engine in, but at least that'll allow me to get everything else in place for the engine to come in. Uh, so I'm going to do that and then we'll, uh, torcolate on the axles and, uh, get the engine up on a stand and spend, uh, probably the rest of the day getting angry at that. All right, so the trans is back in, everything's hooked up. I had the only thing I haven't done and I'm sure I'm going to forget before uh, I actually drive this thing out of here is torque the axles. Uh, I'm gonna spend some time on the engine now. Uh, I'm gonna drain the oil, I'm gonna set the valves. I found that I have a vacuum leak somewhere on the carb uh, or that carb anyway. Um, I'm getting a new setting unit for oil pressure and another sending unit on the bottom for oil temperature because it's gonna read more accurately down there than it does up here. Uh, I think I'm changing the distributor as well and then also dress up pulleys, that's gonna be a pain in the ass. Uh, and then um, I might, uh, might play with the linkage a little bit, I think. So I'm gonna drain the oil and while it's draining, I'll probably run to the store and get some wire and oil. Uh, and then when I get back, uh, oh, I also have to reattach the exhaust because for some reason it is continuing to fall off. So, again, store oil wire back and doing the things. Well, shit. Never had All right, time has passed. Uh, obviously, that pulley disintegrated and I had to make it much worse in order to get it off. The new pulley half is on. I've done the valve adjustment, so now I can get this whole thing back together. I think I'm gonna skip um, 
doing the distributor swap because I can't be bothered to retime this thing. Um, so fan shroud on, belt on, tins and whatever on, and then uh, and then I can hoof it back in the bus. Meanwhile, the giraffe. I need red and black ones because I'm going to do things right for a change. I don't know if I have red and black wires. Well, then they're just going to be yellow. Okay. Use red for ground and yellow for power. I have been uh, installing another gauge in here uh, for oil pressure. So I'll have temp and pressure, and then at some point I'm sure I'll add five or six more gauges so that I have like cylinder head temp for both sides. How about red for power and blue for ground? <coughs> there isn't any black in there. Uh, I mean, there's lots, but I can't really... Oh, look at you. Yep. Okay, it's, uh, it's Monday night. I did not finish this last night like I wanted to. It was one debacle after another. Um, so I wrapped it up around eight o'clock after I got the, the engine back in. Um, I have it at least set up now uh, where we're gonna do the first start since doing all of this crap to make sure that the gauges that I put in work. Uh, it's definitely gonna need a time and tune because I found a vacuum leak. I sorted that out. I wanna see if I fixed. <laughs> If I fix the exhaust, I've uh, I've changed the oil. I changed the filter. I did the valves. Uh, I fixed the exhaust leak. It's got new gauges. So uh, yeah, I've still got to add the breather and do a couple other stupid things. But I at least want to run it and see what happens. So we're gonna do that now. <clears throat> okay. So we've got oil. Uh, temperature and pressure. Um, the pressure sending unit still allows me to use the idiot light as well. So, power on, fuel, okay. Ignition, lights are on. All right, well, it's already going well. That was weird. Uh, okay, let me check the, uh, I wonder if I can bump the signal water. All right, now that I've spent the last hour and a half diagnosing a bad, a bad electric fuel pump that is actually brand new, uh, I put the old uh, Edelbrock clickety clack in it because that was working, uh, and now it's actually pulling fuel, so it should run. Can't be bothered for the second camera right now, so. Too bad. Power, fuel pump, ignition. I'm reading 30 PSI, 40 PSI, 50, 50 PSI. About 40 PSI of oil pressure at idle. All right, so it needs a time and tune still. Ugh. I have yet again run out of time for the evening. So I'm gonna clean all this up, put everything back to, well, you know, put the wheels back on and scoot it back inside and then continue in the morning. Good Lord. Uh, obviously I didn't finish it last night either. It's now Tuesday morning. Uh, I've bled the brakes, secured the chassis wiring, I've kind of did some timing and tuning. The generator wasn't working, I had to sort that out, now it is working. The generator pulley keeps loosening up, almost flew off in my face while I was tuning it. I don't think I've actually fixed that yet, but uh, I'm kind of running out of time for this episode anyway, and it was really supposed to mostly be focused on the suspension bit, which I've done. Uh, haven't driven it yet, kind of just going to take it to the end of the driveway so I get the Fiat out and get started on this yellow thing, which is going to also be an episode starting in about half an hour. Um, ma, 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 ma. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a like, leave a comment, share with your friends, and... Um, I'll uh, see you at the next one, I guess. I gotta get this toilet out of here.